Well, happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. So glad to have you with us today. I'm Derek Shore. Courtney is still off, but we are so excited that our brand new team member here, Tanaya Wright, is filling in today. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and just part of the entire KPRC family, a lot of us. Whirlwind <laughs> week for you because oh Monday was your first day on the air for the morning mm -hmm. show. What time are you waking up these days? Oh, I'm getting up extra early right now just because I'm new, so about... 1:45 ish. You get so, up at 1:45 yes. a.m. So I've been up since 1:45. So let's see what happens with this show. <laughs> that, I mean, that was like 12 hours ago. You I know. Yeah. So what time do you go to bed? Ooh, I try to go to bed by like 6:37. Oh my 6 gosh. 6:37. I've been trying. It's not. I've done mornings for a very long time. So just the whole moving, the whirlwind of starting and everything, and it's. I'll be in my routine in a couple weeks or so. You will. You will adjust just fine. Fall and, right back uh, into it. <laughs> you actually know Houston already because mm -hmm. you've been traveling here for a few years. I understand mm -hmm. your fiance lives here. Yes, he lives here. So once every month, every month or two, I would come to Houston and visit. So we'd go to all the fun events, go to the Hobby Center. We were talking several times, seen a bunch of shows there. I love theater, absolutely love theater. I've gone to Broadway, New York, seen tons of Broadway shows, the West End, Hobby Center has some pretty good ones. I just saw Rent this past weekend. Isn't it incredible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hobby Center, I was not prepared for just how incredible the theater scene here. So Dan Connectis is the artistic director at Theater Under the Stars, yeah. and he's a Tony-nominated director, so he's worked on all these Broadway shows. That's amazing. And he's now here in Houston, and the caliber of theater that we have in this city is second to none. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And if you've seen shows in London and New York, you go to Hobby Center, it feels like you're on Broadway. It does. They're so good, and the, just all the talent that comes through here, it's so amazing. And I don't know, I will probably be there a lot more in the coming months. Well, I'll see you at the theater, because that's one of our favorite things yes. to do as well. So behind the scenes here at Channel 2, I know that maybe you get this, Tanaya. We certainly do. O oftentimes people will say, like, oh, your job is, like, so fun. And mm -hmm. I think people have this idea that um, we just sort of show up and are on TV. But there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. There's definitely a lot. And technically, for you as an anchor, yes. even though you've been doing this for quite some time, I understand there was a bit of... I don't know, an adjustment period for you figuring out what I happens know. behind the desk. So our desk here at Houston Life is a little bit different than the news desk, but yes. maybe you could explain to our viewers some of your responsibilities behind the scenes. Well, it's kind of crazy because we run our own prompter here, so I've never done that before. Here, this is me. I shot this video yesterday. We are, our show's always updating tons and tons of news in Houston. There's the nook where our scripts are. You can see in the uh, desk right there, the anchor desk, we have a computer with our system iNews we run on so we can update scripts, type oh. everything. And then there's our prompter, so. That dial there. The dial, so as we're saying what's going on, we're scrolling through the prompter. So it's a lot going on and people always would email me before like, who does that? And here, it's me. So if Owen messes up, it's my fault probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, but are you running the prompter for yep. Owen, or is he doing his own? If Owen's not sitting next to me, so if Owen is at one of the different venues in the studio, then you're I run rolling it for his him prompter. and vice versa. And so. isn't there a little foot pedal as well, so if you don't want to do the dial, you can use the pedal? I'm sure, so I'd be like it's looking all awkward. <laughs> We'd probably get some emails about that. <laughs> a little hard to reach yes. the pedal. That's so interesting. Yeah, I... Uh, I actually don't know how to roll prompter. I don't know how it's done. Because I learned here, here. <laughs> well, and on Houston Life, we don't really, we just sort of talk. We're so we don't, it. we're just sort of wing it, right? We're not really reading. We do have prompter uh, for a few things, but the folks in our control room are rolling it. So you sort of have to rub your tummy and pat your head. Mm -hmm. Or is it rub your head and pat your tummy? And do our makeup. And do your makeup. At 3 a.m multitasking. Well, I'm Gotten impressed with that. your 1.45 a.m. wake up. I know. Talk to us a little bit about your background because you're from Tampa, Florida, yes. but you've jumped. You've done a, a, a few different cities on your way to Houston. Houston is, of course, the fourth largest city in America. So in the television mm -hmm. business, Houston is considered a big deal yes. because it's a top 10 market. Our DMA number is number seven. seven. So that means like we're seventh in terms of audience size. Which is amazing. No, let's see. I started Tampa, Florida. I graduated from the University of South Florida, got a job as a producer, so behind the scenes right out of college. So, of course, I jumped to the opportunity and took that. Then I was there for probably, it was six and a half, seven years. So I was behind the scenes doing for all of that. For seven years? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But that's good training, though. It's wonderful training. But then 
Always wanted to be an anchor, so I made a demo reel. We have to make audition tapes. We send those out. So then I went to Hagerstown, Maryland. Wow. Yes, I was and you know, it's tricky to make a demo reel. I remember one of my first demo mm -hmm. reels that I made as well. It's tough to make a reel when you don't really have anything to put on it. No. I so would what go did out, you put on it? I would go out on the weekends with photographers in Tampa because I worked there, so I knew all the news. So I'd come in on the weekends, come in on your time off, and go out there and just cover stories with them and made a reel. And now I watched it recently and I cringe. I don't know how I got hired in Hagerstown, Maryland, because it's awful. But my boss saw something in me and was like, let's give her a chance. Gave you a chance. What could go wrong? And you did it. <laughs> I did. So from Maryland, then where did you go? I went from Maryland. I anchored there for two years. And I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. OK. Mornings in Tulsa. Tulsa's a cool city. Tulsa's really cool. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect. It was wonderful. So many wonderful people. It was a great opportunity. I just have so many friends there still. So Tulsa, then Raleigh, North Carolina. OK. That's where I last was in Raleigh. Very nice. I covered a few hurricanes over there. Some uh, hurricanes in Florida I covered I, as well. I covered Hurricane Florence not I, too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're so glad to have you here at Channel 2. And I know that sometimes on live TV, things do not exactly go as planned. <laughs> I happen to think that when things don't go as planned, that makes for some of the best television. And it's funnier. And I understand that you made a little cameo appearance on Jimmy Fallon? I did. Me and my co-anchor. OK, I think we have a clip of that. So why don't we roll that? So newscasters in Oklahoma were reporting on a story about a beaver that broke into a dollar store last week. <laughs> Check out how it went. Apparently they're the most popular creatures right now. This time of year. No, beaver no, breeding. Those little guys are cute and cuddly looking, and the beavers I've seen are bigger. <laughs> yeah, and, and they don't look as friendly, so I, I don't know. Maybe I've seen my beavers in the wrong place. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it was well, hilarious. I mean, that's pretty cool that you made it to Fallon. When did that happen? Tulsa was, ooh, three years ago, maybe? And it was so funny because that happened, and I was like, oh my God, stop talking. I was like, where is this going? So, of course, I thought it was hilarious. So I cut the video, tweeted it out. Someone took the video, and it's all over the place now. Okay. The power of social media, I guess. Sometimes we say things that we don't mean to say, right? Also, mm -hmm. I know that here at Channel 2, we're constantly, we work with the Houston SBCA mm -hmm. and the Humane Society, and we're always featuring pets that are up for adoption. And I understand that you sort of had a little run-in with one of those pets I once. did, with a cat named Midnight, right here. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Wait, so... We can play this a couple times to our control room people. If you don't mind just rolling that back again in case you missed it. Describe to us, oh, did... It bit right under my eye. So that cat's name was Midnight. This was our weekly pet of... Oh. <laughs> I know, right? This was our pet of the week segment when I was in Hagerstown, Maryland. Good old Maryland. So I'm holding this cat. I did this every Monday with this guy, this man, Kirk Livers, wonderful. Stephanie Sonnen is a meteorologist, so I love animals. So I would always hold the animals. Clearly, this was a terrible idea. Oh, my gosh. And what, so did it leave, did it draw blood? Did it? It drew blood. So the cat bit my face, like, right under my eye. My eye swelled up, and I knew something, I, I knew something happened. And I was the only person there, because I solo anchored that show, so it was just me. So I had to finish the show. So With I just kind of put eye. my hair over my eye a little bit. And then the police had to come because it drew blood. So they had to run a police report. Are so, you serious? Yes, because there was blood drawn. Oh, my. Yeah. Against the, I think it was the Humane Society. And I was like, no, don't, don't do anything the to cats. the cat. But the cat did get adopted. Someone adopted it. But they had to, on his uh, paper, say, I bite. Well, yeah, I mean, right? But I feel like any cat could bite. We were feeding, Brandon and I lived across the street from what used to be a, a cat. Did that make any sense? <laughs> like, oh, a cat, you say? So a cat used to live across the street with the family, okay. right? But the cat didn't like the family, I guess. The cat was always at our house. We had a little bed for it. It would sleep on our front porch. It was so cute. I'd go down early in the morning. It'd be curled up on our front porch. like, I love you. Yeah, and we would feed it. And then one day, the cat bit me and scratched me. I mean, bit me in the soft part of my Ooh. hand. And I remember people at work were like, oh, you should get that checked out. Cat scratch fever. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a thing. I've like, heard you can of it get cat scratch fever. They had to quarantine the cat for 10 days to make sure it didn't have anything. Okay. It was it was fine. I'm 
I survived. You survived. And don't you have cats as well? I have two cats, but they've never done that. <laughs> they've never bitten you. I was like, I have two cats. Give me that cat. Just holding it. Just... But you're yeah. straight in the face. It, I mean, it's. I thought it was hilarious. After the fact. After the fact. After the fact, I'm it was glad hilarious. you're okay. But cats, oh, those claws, they can be, they can mm -hmm. be really intense. Well, I hope that cat found a very, very good home because clearly, especially here in Houston, as you'll see, know. you know, we have, there. there's a problem here with a lot mm -hmm. of stray animals. And so trying to find them homes is, is a big mission for many organizations. Well, and this weekend's clear the shelter, so the huge adoption event. So lots of people, if you are looking for a forever friend, it is a great time to do so. Yeah, that's an excellent point. In summertime, uh, is a great time to adopt because there's such great need. So many mm -hmm. of these shelters are uh, are filled up. Speaking of, of shelters, little I text know. man, our little shelter dog seems very comfortable here at Houston Life. He's not amused with us. <laughs> Tonight, tell me, what are some of your favorite stories to cover? I've covered so many different stories over the years, but I would have to say my recent favorite story, I met, I did a whole veteran, my dad was in the military, so I did a whole veteran series, and I met this one man, he was a soldier, this is him right here. His name is Alfredo Hurtado. So wonderful. He, such a sad story. He was overseas and his um, Humvee got hit by an IED. Oh, wow. And he strapped all over his body. He's injured really bad. He um, post-traumatic stress disorder and he had a traumatic brain injury. And he said he was suicidal, but then he turned to dance. Like, it's kind of like interpretive dancing what he does at this theater called Black Box. And this was on my story. He. Uh, tried to spin me and it didn't go too well. I made it once around in a circle. I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm dizzy. What an incredible but story, too. It was too. so amazing. And he tells his story to show others there are different ways to cope with everything. And, yeah. you know, and you would never know no. his background just by looking at him. Mm. Strong guy, on his feet, smile on his face. It's so incredible that he was able to overcome some of those issues. And he said he's a soldier. He wanted to be able to move his body, and that helped him heal. And he never knew. He said at first he just got a journal and started writing, but then he'd write lyrics. So then he would give the lyrics to this dance lady he knew, like a teacher, and they opened this black box dance theater. And, and it's so amazing. And stories like that, I'm not surprised mm -hmm. that they hit home for you because you actually lost your father, your Gold Star family. Mm -hmm. You lost your father when you were just four years old. He was in a training accident. Yes, yeah, so my father was a Green Beret, um, passed away. I was four, training accident. So I was uh, actually in Fort Devens up in Massachusetts. That's where I was born. So after that happened, my mom, my sister, and I moved to Florida. I got a ton of military scholarships. The military family so tight, like the yeah. whole community. So I always go around and do speaking engagements with military events and families. So I was just in North Carolina, Fort Bragg was, so I did a lot of stuff with all of that. And it's just amazing. How incredible, too, that you were able to keep his memory alive mm -hmm. by working as a journalist and helping other veterans tell their stories. That's oh really gosh. powerful. Doing all of those veteran stories were just so amazing because you see people on the street and you don't realize the things that they go through or that they've been through and just being able to share their stories and tell them, it was great. Yeah. I'm so glad I got to do that. We're all walking among heroes. Mm -hmm. Every single day we pass people, like you said, we don't know their story. Don't even know. My mom always taught me too, you know, be nice to people because you don't know mm -hmm. what they're going through or what they've been through. And I feel like one of the reasons why I love talking to people is as we get to know each other and actually as we have conversations, we realize that we all are much more alike exactly. than we are Lots in different. Common. Well, we're so glad to have you here Thank today, Tanaya.